Trails in a Reverie is the newest Trails game to hit the West, and is really just a love letter to longtime fans of the series. For those looking to jump into Trails for the first time, this is not the game for you. But for those who have been following the journeys of Reen and Lloyd through the past six Trails games, Trails in a Reverie feels like a loving send-off to these amazing characters and locations we've come to love. Before we hop into this spoiler-free review, I want to give a big thank you to Nisa for graciously allowing me to play the game early, and for all their continued work on the series. Trails in a Reverie is pretty unique for a Trails game. The game is split between three different routes, Reen's, Lloyd's, and the Enigmatic Seas as they face new troubles in the aftermath of the Great Twilight. These routes are actually very straightforward. Unlike Cold Steel 4, there is very little in the way of side quests and not too much NPC dialogue, and things like bonding events aren't here. Instead, nearly all of the side content has been placed into the True Reverie Corridor, the big new side mode you'll unlock early on. While you may be tempted to just start with Reen or Lloyd and play them all the way through, you can't. The routes are very intertwined. You can only progress so far in one route before being prompted to move on to another. This has its pros and cons. By the time I felt a bit tired of playing as the Crossbell Gang, I was prompted to instead see what Reen was up to. You'll be swapping every couple hours, and so no group really overstays its welcome. At the same time, there were some moments where I came back to a route and was like, wait, what were we doing? Trails is all about the story, so how is it here? Reverie is neat in that it is both Cold Steel 5, Crossbell 3, and also a little bit of a prologue to Kuro. For me, the highlights are absolutely Lloyd and C's routes. While Lloyd and the gang were present in Cold Steel, they were still ultimately just side characters. Reverie finally lets you see things from Lloyd's perspective once more, and reunites you with nearly every Crossbell character we didn't see in the last two games. After four games of Reen, it really is just a breath of fresh air, and ties up so many loose ends that I'd almost forgotten were there. While Lloyd's is amazing, I absolutely loved Reen's as well. And since it's been over a year and a half since I beat Cold Steel 4, reuniting with Class 7 and seeing how Reen deals with the aftermath of the Twilight is really captivating. Having Milliam back is great too. Since Crossbell is at the center of Reverie, Yuna specifically has some great moments that I really enjoyed. C's route was the one I was most excited for beforehand, and it definitely doesn't disappoint. It has a super lovable and interesting cast that comes together under some odd circumstances, but somehow make a charming family out of it all. After playing Estelle, Lloyd, and Reen, and also Kevin, finally playing as someone who isn't a huge goody two-shoes is a refreshing experience. If you haven't already, be sure to read 3 and 9 before starting the game as it sets up quite a lot in C's story. It's also readable in the main menu for Reverie, but save yourself the time now and just read it beforehand. I thoroughly enjoyed the story of Reverie overall. Its biggest strength is that it really is well-paced, especially coming from Cold Steel 4. Everything they do in the story happens for a reason, and doesn't really feel pointlessly padded. Since I know a lot of people really hated it, it is worth mentioning that while the curse may be over, its influence in the story definitely isn't. While I personally found the curse fine and thoroughly enjoyed Cold Steel 4, there may be some small parts of Reverie's deeper plot that some Cold Steel haters may find kinda BS in the same way. See for yourself though, even if you hated the curse, I still think Reverie is absolutely worth playing. You've come this far in the story of Western Zemuria, and it's amazing to see it through to the end. I played with the dub, and it does a great job of bringing the game to life. Finally hearing characters like Noel and Wazi in English was great. Their VAs really nailed how I always thought they'd sound. A couple of VAs also got replaced in this game, and while I was initially skeptical, their new VAs do a fantastic job. Kia's new voice is amazing and a huge improvement, and Renz does a great job of giving us a much more mature take on the character. I'm excited to hear more of her in the future, and I'm sure she'll continue to do a fantastic job. While initially your resources and items will be separated between the three routes, not far in, you'll be able to share them while unlocking the true Reverie Corridor, Reverie's big new feature. This is essentially Sky 3rd, but as a separate mode. It's a dungeon filled with extra content, and it gives you a spot to fight and grind to your heart's content in a dungeon that's different every time. Inside, you'll find plenty of good loot to help you in the main story, and through fighting bosses inside, you'll be awarded with orbs which unlock different rewards. 
Gold unlocks you a new character exclusive to the Reverie Corridor, someone you won't get in the main story. Red unlocks minigames. Blue unlocks daydreams, which expand the story. And Silver gives you random items and quartz in a gotcha-like system. The layouts are pretty basic, but you can find some unique twists here and there, like ambushes, zones where you're blinded or can't cast spells, void spires, portals to other worlds, some basic puzzles, and more. At the base camp of the corridor, you can talk with all the other characters you've recruited for some fun dialogue, and all the side content from the other games, like Vantage Masters, Palm Party, Trial Doors, and more return here. Here you can also view the new Daydreams, this game's equivalent of Doors, where you get to see some extra story. And plenty of new minigames like Who Wants to Be a Miranaire, Magical Girl Elisa, a Beach Date Mode, and more. Instead of constantly receiving side quests in the main story, you instead receive and complete missions to explore in the Reverie Corridor for rank points and rewards. Master missions are long-term goals to work towards, but you'll constantly receive mini-missions that you can renew whenever you reset the dungeon. They also added items you can use to give people experience and level them up, which you'll definitely make use of if you're trying to keep this huge roster at the same level. While you can do a lot in the corridor during the course of the main story, a lot of stuff won't unlock until you've completed all the routes, making it Trail's first true post-game experience. If you love building the absolute best party or trying out wacky combinations, then you'll have plenty of fun in here. Mechanically, Reverie is still the same game as the previous two, for better or for worse. If you enjoyed the gameplay before, then you'll still surely enjoy it here. But, if you're looking for trails to take that next big step for a unique new experience, then you'll have to wait a bit longer for Kuro. Still though, Reverie also has some neat improvements that make it a bit better than what came before. The game is a lot more cinematic at times, with some real action shots that look really good, and a bit more variety in camera angles and whatnot. There's numerous little UI improvements, like a little description for items you get from chess, being able to swap quartz off people and put it right on someone else, and even seeing elements enemies are weak to right from the arts list. You can change the speed of turbo now, and there's some balance changes to quartz and stuff, like not being able to spam chrono burst. The default brave point limit is back to 5, though you can upgrade it back eventually. While they clearly tried to balance some things, the addition of United Fronts, a new ability to quickly attack or heal on the fly using the Assault Gauge, along with plenty of other old cheese strats still working fine, made Nightmare not all that hard for me. Again though, if you've made it to Reverie, then you've probably played enough Trails to know these games aren't ever really that hard, so not surprising. Luckily there is the new Abyss difficulty if Nightmare is too easy for you, and you can even adjust enemy levels to keep things difficult when you're on New Game Plus. Overall, Reverie is a great new entry into the Trails series. The three routes give it a unique feel compared to the other games, letting you experience three intriguing perspectives in the world of Zemuria through three lovable casts, giving a loving send-off to the story of these characters over the past nine games, and setting the stage for what's to come. The true Reverie Corridor lets you fight your heart out and build your dream team in a regenerative dungeon, and gives you plenty of content to enjoy even after completing the main story. Its daydreams let you experience little stories throughout Zemuria, giving us more of the characters and world we've come to know and love. And of course, there's plenty of fun minigames both new and old to unlock and enjoy. It's very much another Trails game, and for those who have stuck with the series from the beginning and love all it has to offer, Reverie is the crown jewel and a loving conclusion to the first half of the overall series, and a game that I absolutely love and recommend.